Hello, today we'll be unboxing a Lenovo Think Center in M720E. So let's go ahead and get this open. So this is a desktop, as you can tell by the size of the box. Let's take a quick look inside. First we have ourselves a keyboard. And I know a lot of people like the keyboards. So these are standard Lenovo keyboards. They have a lot of spring to them, so I know a lot of people enjoy typing on these. I'm one of the fans. I also like the Dell ones. Uh, so they're pretty sturdy, straightforward. I uh, got a full, you know, it's a standard keyboard. And this is a wired USB keyboard. So there's nothing spectacular about it, but it will do the job and be pleasant to use. So the other thing is you have everything inside of this little section here. The paperwork, as for most uh, things these days, is really about the warranty and safety instructions. There's very little in the ways of paperwork in these things. And of course you will find a USB mouse, uh, quite boring, got a bit of red on it, that's about it. So the rest is the power cord, it's pretty standard, and we have Let's see what else is in here. We have a stand. So it's just a piece of plastic, which you can sit the unit on if you want to put it uh, vertical, and uh, just sits in here to keep it from tipping. So that's all that is. And there we're... So now, let's get to the actual computer. So, let's take it out of its box, put the box away. So they are using styrofoam. So if you're listening to this, maybe use something that's a little more environmental. And as you'll see, this is a small form factor. So it's quite small. And let's take a look at what's in the front of it. So in the front, what you'll find is the power button. You've got USB and USB 3.X on there, headphone jack, microphone jack, and this there seems to be a piece of plastic there, but I don't think that's anything. There's also a DVD player, and of course a CD. Now this will uh, actually be able to burn on these, I believe, as well. It says RW Read Write. So let's go ahead and spin this to the back, and take a quick look at the ports that come with this unit. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and please consider subscribing, it really helps us out on YouTube. So first things you'll see is if you were to add any cards in there, you would have to get the more compact cards since these are not full length. Okay, so in the back you'll see power. You've got some more USB ports here. This is the network, it's Ethernet, so it's a gigabit port. You've got a VGA and this is a display port. So if you want to have two videos, you would have to use VGA and DisplayPort. If you need additional videos, you could always add a video card. And let's talk a little bit about the unit itself. Uh, this is a, a pretty basic model, and it's about the minimum that I recommend. This is an i5. In this particular case, it's an i5-9400. That's a Gen 9. And uh, it's running at uh, 2.9 gigahertz. It's got six cores. This particular unit has eight gigs of RAM and a two, this is a 256 gigabit SSD drive. It's an NVMe drive, so those are faster drives. So this will give you speed. It'll be good for a while. Uh, this is perfect for if you have employees that are staying at home, for example. It's relatively low cost. In the US, it should be around, I'm gonna say six, seven hundred dollars. Uh, if you're up in Canada, then it's uh, closer to nine hundred dollars. Some people have asked if I could open the units. They're curious to know what's inside of them. So I'm going to go ahead and just open it quickly. So what you'll find inside is the CPU has a cooling fan on top of the heat sink. Um, you'll notice that the memory actually is underneath this bay here. And the NVMe drive is completely back towards um, the front here. You could easily increase the memory by adding it right here in the empty slot. 
The other thing that I want to point out since some of the questions that I got is regarding the power supply. One of the questions I get is can I change the power supply put something larger in there? As you'll notice uh, this is a very small uh, power supply and if you were to want to change it you can't really go out there and get a third party power supply. You'd have to measure this and make sure that whatever you get would fit this case. Most of the manufacturers, whether it's uh, Hewlett Packard, or Lenovo, or Dell, uh, will use either odd shapes, smaller uh, power supplies, and they're usually made specifically for them. So you want to be uh, careful for that. You can't just go out and get, a, for example, an EVGA uh, power supply and expect to just put it in there. So as most computers today, this one comes with Windows 10 Pro. So we're going to go ahead and start it up and take a quick look. So one of the tests that we like to do is called PC User Benchmark and it's userbenchmark.com. You can go ahead and download the software for free and it will run as we're doing here. And at the end it compares your system to other systems that are similar. So my first impressions of the system is that it's uh, relatively responsive and I'm doing some benchmarks at the same time. Now here we go. So this is the results. But let's go ahead and take a quick look at the responsiveness. As you can tell, it's uh, it responds pretty quickly to everything. And so we're on a browser right now. And let's go ahead and take a quick look. So it's obviously not a computer meant for gaming. If you were to go into a gaming environment, you'd probably want to add a GPU, a graphical processing unit. And so as a desktop, however, as you can see, it's it's pretty high up there. Let's take a quick look. So from the, so the Intel itself is pulling its own weight. It's fairly good. This is ninth generation. As you may or may not be familiar, that we're up to the tenth generation right now. As I was mentioning, the slowest part on here is the GPU, since there is none. It's using the uh, Intel chip itself to generate the graphics. So this is quite slow, which is why it's mentioning it's terrible. Uh, again, if we're just going to be using this in an office environment, it really makes no difference. Uh, Word, Excel, and so forth, even presentations. Of course, YouTube and the rest will do fine with this. So the drive on here is an SK Hynix uh, drive. So it's showing you the speed, and it's showing you roughly, here we go, sequential, and then there's random, and of course sequential is much faster. So you're getting 1.4 for write, and for read, you're at 926. Uh, it's it's much faster than a mechanical drive and it is faster than an SSD drive. So from that point of view, it is faster. However, you can get much faster drives if you would go out there and get them yourselves. Uh, if you're looking at things like um, Samsung Evo drives, there's some the latest generations. And the memory kit here, it shows you, as we've seen before, it's uh, one of two slots used and a single slot is an eight uh, gig so it's a dim DDR4 and here's the speed so it's 2667 megahertz uh, which is you know pretty much uh, standard right now and it's showing you latency and a few other things. So this has been Bob Pellerin, CTO Bob. Thanks for watching. We appreciate it. Stay tuned for next time.